Now, the senseless shooting rampage has many lawmakers sounding the alarm for change. Right now, we are joined by Congressman Brian Higgins to talk about the effort on Capitol Hill to combat and federally criminalize domestic terrorism. Congressman Higgins, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us this afternoon. Happy to be with you. So first, I just kind of want to set this off. You know, with this being your district, I kind of want to see, you know, where your head's been at this past week. Well, it was a vile, premeditated attack by a white supremacist on the black community of Buffalo. So my uh, my head is with my people. And I was at the service this morning. I'll be attending more services uh, moving forward. And this is a terrible tragedy. You saw the anguish on the faces of people uh, who have been directly affected by this and the general community. And we need to act more decisively on assault weapons, on issues as it relates to uh, social media, uh, cable news television. What kind of speech is allowed and what isn't? What poses a, a, a clear and present danger and what does not because obviously this situation in buffalo is not new to buffalo or is not new to the nation but it is new to buffalo and it's heartbreaking uh, to observe to experience to interact with people that have been directly affected by this brian I'm, I'm curious if you could please explain the bill that was approved on uh, i guess that was wednesday evening late in the evening mostly along party lines so tell us what is included in that bill and i'd also like your reaction as to why it was approved mostly along party lines with people like republican congressman chris jacobs voting no when this is happening so close to home yeah it's the domestic uh, terrorist prevention act and what it simply would allow is uh, for federal law enforcement agencies like the FBI, Homeland Security, and the Department of Justice to share information that they have on potential uh, targets uh, for uh, these kinds of, uh, of attacks and the potential perpetrators of that as well. Wow. Uh, it's critically important that we have that information and that law enforcement agencies are able to share that information freely. It would also provide more resources from the federal government uh, to uh, localities and states uh, to better deal with these kinds of issues. But there is a specific reference uh, to white supremacists. And this is a problem in our nation that's pervasive and growing. Uh, law enforcement agencies need the resources in order to protect our citizens. Uh, people should be able to be safe, but they should also be able to feel safe uh, in their communities. So that's what this bill is designed to do. And again, your reaction as to why it was voted along party lines. Why were there so many uh, on the other side of the aisle, including Republican Congressman Chris Jacobs, who voted against this bill? Yeah, I guess you would have to ask them because my reading to this bill, uh, it's very commonsensical. It's not ideological. And there is clearly an opportunity uh, to do something to help communities like Buffalo uh, who have been now uh, experienced uh, a vile, premeditated attack by a white supremacist on the black, the black community of Buffalo and Western New York. So now what is next for this bill? Where does it go from here? Well, it goes over to the Senate, and I have to be honest with you, the chances of it passing in the Senate are probably not good. And uh, that's a terrible shame. I mean, even common sense gun safety legislation, like extensive background checks, uh, that the vast majority of Americans support uh, is held up in the Senate, uh, where there's a 50-50 uh, Democrat to Republican where the vice president breaks any ties. But they also, as you probably know, have a filibuster rule in the Senate, which makes these bills that much more difficult to get through. Congressman Brian Higgins, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us this afternoon. We appreciate your time uh, and what is no doubt a very busy week there on Capitol Hill. Thanks very much.